Starfield is landing soon. Haha, <laughs> get it? Spaceship? Ah, you get it. This is going to be one of the biggest games ever made. And obviously, they're not going to tell you every little thing going on. In fact, sometimes they're going to intentionally withhold information. But no worry, Game Ranks is here to ruin the mystery. Hi, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things Starfield doesn't tell you. Starting off with number 10, cheats are back, at least in the PC version. While the gaming landscape as a whole has moved away from letting players cheat in their games, Boo, might I add, and not Boo Earns. Bethesda, however, has remained pretty consistent with allowing players to open up the console and do whatever the hell they want. There's no settings to change or INI files to rewrite or launch options to offer. In Starfield, you hit the tilde key and there's the console. Now keep in mind, I'm writing this pre-release so there's not any information out there. Uh, I'm basically stuck guessing on the codes, but here's the thing. While Starfield may be using the Creation Engine 2, it is the Creation Engine 2, meaning although it is massively beefier and it's not just the little iterative approach that they took in decades past on the creation engine it's still a heavily modified and updated form of the creation engine and the same engine that was used on skyrim and fallout 4 so fallout 4 is probably the best place to start guessing codes and there we go fallout 4 codes do work you can turn off collision with TCL, go to the developer room with COCQA. Sounds exciting, but not a lot in it. It's not like the dev room for Fallout 4 where you can get every item. This one's pretty empty. Uh, there might be a better dev room in the game somewhere, but it's not here. So the dev room was a bust, but a lot of other codes still work great, like player set level number, which, uh, hey, look at that. How long is it gonna be before you're level 69? Not long. A lot of goofier codes work too, like kill all, which does exactly what you'd expect. Kills everyone around you. You can change the size of objects and NPCs by clicking on something with the console open and typing set scale one through 10. Uh, so you can make people and things gigantic. If that's too much for you, you can do something simple like strip everyone down to their skivvies with unequip all if you want, or you could end the game and use complete all quests, CAQS. Uh, it does not work great, just so you know. There's even a developer message or two in there if you do all this, and at the end it just crashes the game, so maybe not a good idea to do CAQS. It works, but it also doesn't really work. Item codes still work, at least. Oddly enough, the Fallout 4 version of the code doesn't work, but the Fallout New Vegas form does. So if you want to cheat a bunch of free credits, type in item seven zeros in the letter F, and then the amount you want. Money makes the universe go round in Starfield in, you know, also real life. So more cash on hand is always useful. Uh, Starfield is where you can cheat it into existence, though. You can only do that in real life if you already have money. I know, I know, that sounds insane, but it's true. Believe me. Using cheats, it, it does lock you out of achievements, and it can cause the game to become unstable. So be careful before you're using any stuff, like make a backup save, uh, and do not go overboard. Like previous games, knowing the cheats can be a lifesaver. Near the end of the game, I got a quest where all the NPCs went hostile on me for no reason, but I was able to complete it by making myself invisible so they wouldn't go aggro for no reason. It's times like this where cheats aren't just handy, they're essential. It is a Bethesda game after all, so finding workarounds for bugs is sometimes almost as important as actually playing the thing, and I said this in a previous video, Creation Engine 2 is not just an iterative upgrade, it's a major upgrade, but it is also still the Creation Engine, and there's still gonna be bugs. And number nine is uh, how to board and steal ships. Stealing ships very useful in Starfield, but it's never actually explained in game. Um, for a while, I didn't even realize it was possible, but yeah, you can actually steal ships. There are a few requirements you need in order to pull it off, uh, though. For one thing, you need to be able to target ship systems separately, so you gotta get at least one rank of the targeting control systems perk under the tech tree. Do that, uh, or have a crew member that can do that, uh, because you need that. But now that you can target ships, you can activate targeting when you're fighting another ship outside in space. It doesn't matter what kind of ship it is, just enemy ship random merchant vessel, whatever. As long as it's a ship that can be boarded, you're good. And that's most ships. 
keep in mind. There are a few legendary vessels that can't be boarded because they're too big, but they're pretty rare and most ships let you dock them. Now with the ship targeted, you got to focus fire on the engines, take those completely out and the ship's going to stop moving. That's your opportunity to board. So you fly as close as possible to disabled ship and dock with it. You got to be fast because a lot of ships are going to try to repair and if they get back any power at all, you're not going to be able to dock. Um, but now that you've gained access to the ship, all you do is clear out any enemies and interact with the pilot seat. If all the enemies are dead, the ship's yours. To keep it, you need to land in a spaceport and from there, it's added to your fleet. Ships can be crazy expensive in this game, so stealing one is the like one of the best ways to get a better ship at the start. There are a few downsides to ship hijacking. For one thing, you can't modify or upgrade your stolen ship until you register it at a starport and, and registering it is equivalent to buying the ship it costs a lot but if you don't care about making changes to a ship don't register there you go free ship another important thing to remember is to leave your companions behind if you're stealing an innocent person's ship most of the main companions will abandon you on the spot if you kill an innocent person have you lost your mind is there even a mind to lose so make sure you're not around when you're stealing a ship. That way they won't get mad at you for any of the blatant acts of thievery and murder that you had to do to get the ship. Oh, this is a cool ship, bro. Where'd you get this ship? Well, let's just say I didn't kill anyone you know to get it. Oh, that sounds really messed up, but I didn't see it, so whatever. At number eight, the Stealth Archer build is just as good, if not better. In Bethesda's games, if, th if there's one build that rules them all, it's the Stealth Archer. Skyrim is where it started, hence the name. Fallout 4 made it somehow more powerful, and it's just as good in Starfield. Hell, might be the best it's ever been. To become an unstoppable killing machine, all it takes is an appropriate application of skills. There's a decent amount of skills you get, and you'll need specific ones, uh, a fair amount of them, to get the most out of this. But the main ones you want are ballistics which increases projectile damage pistol rifle or shotgun certification which increases damage with those weapons and sharpshooting because it causes headshots to do way more damage and of course stealth which makes it harder for you to be detected and increases the damage caused by suppressed weapons if you got all that and a decent silence gun which drops fairly often from chests or enemies um you can also mod one uh, but it's likely that you'll have multiple silence weapons by the time you unlock the skill now if you really want to be overpowered I'd suggest a few more things. For one, a modded piece of armor that makes it so you're invisible when you don't move. This is another mod you can add yourself or you can find it randomly out in the world, but the main thing here is that if you find something with this mod, equip it and never let it go because being able to turn invisible by just crouching whenever you want makes it incredibly easy to attack from stealth. Even if you're in the middle of a firefight and everyone's staring right at you, all you have to do is duck and then shoot and you'll get a stealth bonus without using stealth. You're just, you're, you're invisible. So stealth, if you get a silent shotgun with a tight spread, that's even less work for you. You barely have to even try at that point. Just stand outside a base and delete enemies with ease. You don't even have to move or aim anymore. Just as long as there's something in the shotgun's reticle, it's probably going to be dead. It's so powerful. I legitimately had to stop using it to keep things interesting. That's how ridiculous the stealth archer build has gotten in Starfield. Stealth and precision are aren't even necessary anymore. And number seven, how to smuggle contraband. We all knew there was gonna be smuggling in Starfield. It's one of those things they touted pre-release, but it's never really explained how to do it in the game. It's one of those things you just have to figure out yourself. And it's not that complicated, just to be clear. However, there's definitely some parts that are worth explaining. Uh, how it works, fairly simple. There's certain items called contraband. They're marked with a yellow symbol. Um, and outside of major cities, before you can land your ship, it's gotta be scanned by authorities. And if they catch you with contraband, you get a fine. United Colony Space. Maintain current course while we scan for contraband. The contraband is then removed from your inventory and Jabba the Hutt chases you down for three movies. I mean, even I get boarded sometimes. Basically, you don't want that to happen, obviously, doy. So if you happen to pick up some contraband like illegal artificial intelligence or human organs, don't leave them in your inventory because you'll get caught a thousand percent of the time. There is a way to get around these scans though. Certain places will sell you shielded cargo holds you can hide contraband in. Only two places I know of 
sell the shielded type of cargo hold, though. The Red Mile on Parima 3 and the Key, otherwise known as the Crimson Fleet's main base. The only way to access the Key is to join the Crimson Fleet faction, which will require some explanation, and I'll, I'll get into that a little later, so stick around. Uh, but both places are great for unloading contraband in your inventory without having to worry about getting scanned. They're both outside UC and Freestar space, so you can land without having to worry about being scanned, and then you can sell your illicit goods there without incident. Any contraband you pick up is basically a ticking time bomb. You get within spitting distance of any major cities, you're screwed. So protect yourself and get some shielded cargo holds for your ship, okay? And number six is skills that you got to unlock first. A lot of skills in this game, a lot of them. Most I would consider optional, but there's a few that are completely necessary. For one, you absolutely want to put at least a point or two in the combat tree. Ballistics or laser weapons especially. At first, I underestimated just how important these skills were. I, I put a few points into them during my first run, but assumed they were useless. Uh, they were anything but. When I started up a new character and invested in other skills, I saw myself dying constantly to encounters that were easy in my first playthrough, so combat skills make a big difference. Another skill I would consider really essential is boost pack training in the tech skill tree this gives you the ability to double jump essentially and it doesn't just make combat encounters more interesting it's also basically necessary for navigating the world at a certain point there's missions that require it to be completed and getting around could be a huge pain in certain places so yeah put at least one point into the boost pack skill at least one One constant annoyance for me at the start of the game was the inventory size. It's frustratingly small at first. You can barely hold anything without getting encumbered. So put a point or two in the weightlifting setting and the physical skill tree. Uh, then you can carry more stuff and that's great. Uh, on that note, a point in payload in the tech tree is also not a bad idea either. That increases your ship's cargo capacity, which at least in the starting ship, really small. Uh, security in the tech tree is also super useful. It's a game's catch all for breaking into doors, chests, computers, etc and it does just greatly increase the amount of rewards you're getting it also opens up new options in a lot of missions persuasion in the social tree is also a must-have um surprisingly in most games like this talking is kind of pointless but in starfield you're going to use it a lot everybody wants to negotiate something and people are constantly trying to get money out of you so being able to talk them down or trick somebody to let you into a building it's super useful and it's often the best way to resolve certain quests those are the only skills i'd consider absolutely essential though there's a lot more good ones but for the most part you can get by with whatever you want in starfield at number five, upgrade your ship ASAP or hire a crew. Actually scratch what I just said. There's a ton of skills you need, mostly in the tech tree, that control how effective your ship is. Because here's the thing, starting ship sucks, really sucks. You're gonna get blown out of the sky nine times out of 10 if you just stick with your base ship. So put some points into the ship skills and upgrade it, whatever. Like first goal starting out should be either upgrading the ship or hiring a crew. What makes crew members so useful, especially when you got them in your ship, is your skills actually transfer over to you when you're flying. So someone who has a high piloting skill in your crew makes it so you you control your ship better some of weapon skills makes your attacks stronger etc etc so you don't have to get all these skills yourself just get some crew members that have them the best way to get a crew is to either advance the story and unlock all the main companions in the lodge all of which are good as crew or go down to any bar in one of the main cities and talk to people most of them are looking to hire out their services and the game tells you what they can do on the right side of the screen even with a good crew you're gonna want to upgrade that starter ship or buy a new one upgrade Upgrading's relatively cheap if you go that route. The main thing you want to improve is cargo because starting capacity is crap. It, it's so bad. So you want to add some fuel so you can make longer grab jumps. Getting around can be like really tedious without fuel. So add another tank. You may have to upgrade the engine to compensate for the added weight, but it's worth it and it's not going to cost that much. If it all sounds like a pain, just buy a new ship. Well, we'd be dust except I have never liked Hope Tech ships. Welcome to Hope Tech Sales. No, I suppose that is hardly invoice. the point of them. You got the financing set up already? Um, from my experience, one of the best places to pick up a good starter ship is Hope Town in Polvo uh, in the Valo system. They sell ships with a lot of cargo capacity. Pretty much all of them are better than your starter ship, too. Uh, but I personally really like the Watchdog 4. It's got a huge cargo and some pretty good weapons on top of that. That's just my preference, though.
And number four, how to join the Crimson Fleet. And, uh oh, word of warning. One of the best faction storylines of the game is the Crimson Fleet, but joining them, it, it takes a little more effort than your standard faction. You don't just go to a recruiter and sign up. These guys are normally your enemies. Like, they're the first guys you fight at the start of the game, so they're hostile to you by default. If you actually want to join them, you got to do something counterintuitive. You got to get caught. I stole something, uh, but I don't really think it matters what you do. All that matters is you commit a crime and get caught for it. When that happens, you agree to go to jail. Just agree. Don't fight them. You'll get taken to a ship and recruited to go undercover with the Crimson Fleet. Of course, the guys who grab you are United Colonies people, so you probably have to get caught in UC space for this to work, but uh, I, I mean, I don't know 100% if it actually matters. From there, you progress the story and eventually get inducted into the fleet. You get access to the main base, the key, one of the few places you can sell contraband without any issues. Um, getting access to the base early does have its uses, but joining the fleet also has some major downsides. The most annoying thing is that if you kill Crimson Fleet members, there's going to be a bounty you got to pay if you want to keep using the key. Uh, these guys often show up as unavoidable enemies in a lot of missions, including main story ones. So if you do join, you're eventually going to have to pay out the nose to keep access to the base, uh, which sucks. So it may not be the best idea to join first opportunity possible. Instead, wait a little while, progress the story first, or just plan on playing through the entire faction quest line immediately after joining them. So it's not such a pain when you're inevitably forced to pay for killing some of these guys. Uh, when I say the bounty's expensive, I mean it. Just for killing a small base, I got hit with 150,000 credit fine. And that's just from one mission where you fight the fleet. Uh, don't make the same mistake I did and join the fleet uh, early. Do it when you're good and ready. Like, it's got to be an intentional move. And number three, Beware the Mission, No Sudden Moves. Uh, this entry contains spoilers for one of the main story missions, so yeah, but I will try to keep it as vague as possible, but if any spoilers at all bother you, skip ahead to number two. There's a mission called No Sudden Moves. You can complete it whenever you want, but once you do, you're immediately thrown in the next story mission called High Price to Pay, which is super important because depending on the choice you make here, one of your companions is going to die permanently. Not going to say who. I just want to make it clear that the game gives you no warning that you're going into a point of no return uh, after the mission No Sudden Moves. After that one's done, you're forced into a sequence where no matter what, you're going to lose a main companion. It's not a fake out either. They're permanently gone so be ready for it if that doesn't bug you just go right into it but for the people who'd rather know ahead of time i wanted to throw out a warning because the game doesn't at number two, base building is mostly unexplained. In many ways, base building is a lot like Fallout 4, uh, but way less janky. There's some things that are worth knowing ahead of time, though, because uh, there are some annoying pitfalls that can easily be avoided with a little knowledge. Uh, there's a few things you will need. For one, uh, you'll want to ship with a lot of cargo capacity because building bases requires a lot of parts and materials. Um, you're going to want to load up with as much of that stuff as is possible. Every major city has a store that sells minerals before base building. Building, you go to these places and clean them out. Don't waste your time wandering around empty planets, lasering random rocks. That takes forever. Just buy all the stuff you need in the store. Uh, most of it's not even expensive. By far the most common base building material is aluminum. Uh, just buying this stuff isn't going to be enough, so you should really consider building an aluminum extractor before getting serious about base building. Uh, how extractors work is you scan the ground for minerals and the game will show you where they're buried. To gather it, you put down the extractor, which is placed automatically, and it generates the mineral. They'll collect stuff without power. It is extremely slow, though. So next, you're going to want to build a solar generator, or maybe even two, and hook them up to that extractor. Uh, that'll speed it up. And just one extractor with power should be more to get more aluminum than you're ever going to need. Aluminum is one of the most common minerals, and one of the easiest places to get it early on is mercury in the soul system. Now you just need to get the many manufactured parts required for base building which can also be bought in most stores in the main cities just load up on resources this stuff it's more expensive but get enough extractors going and you'll quickly start getting more money than you're going to know what to do with now that you've got access to most of the things you need easily it makes the whole process of base building so much smoother and finally, at number one, stick around for New Game Plus. It is definitely worth it. Uh, another spoiler one, but again, gonna keep it vague. Starfield's the first Bethesda game with a dedicated New Game Plus, and it might not sound that interesting, but they actually do some pretty cool stuff with it. After beating the game, you get the option to start over from the beginning with your game stats and equipment held over, which is pretty common for these types of things, but that's just the start. You also get new dialogue options, new reactions for people, new sets of clothes, and even a new ship. The new dialogue 
dialogue options are especially great. It's just fun to play around and see what new things you can say to people. It doesn't even stop there. The game also gives you the option to either play through the story again or just let you skip it. So in a lot of ways, Starfield's New Game Plus acts like an expanded endgame just as much as a New Game Plus mode. It's honestly one of the coolest, most unique features of the game, and it's well worth taking at least a few extra hours to explore. The only thing it, it really actually does is reset your companions and quest progression. So you have to redo side quests and regain lost crew and companions, but outside of that, the game gives you everything back. So if you're in the middle of like a faction quest or something, you'll probably want to finish that before beating the game. I know this is pretty vague about how it works, but you really should experience the new game plus for yourself. It's definitely worth it. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see the first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.